Audacity 3.2 has been released with some major changes. The changes are mainly on how we use it and its support for plugins. I will show you all the prominent changes one by one. The first change is a new effects button is added on the track to add real-time effects. Current no tracks here, so I will record one quickly. You see a new effects button here. This button lets you add real-time but third-party effects. I have some paid effects from Accusinus and Isotope, which appear here. You can add some free effects, and Audacity will guide you on which effects you can add. There are mainly third-party effects that offer equalizers, filters, and many more. You can check this page to see which plugins are available and what kind of plugins are supported. You can cross out the real-time effects panel to hide it. You can add as many effects as you want and reorder their position here. You can replace an effect or disable it. In previous versions of Audacity, it was not possible to turn off and on effects like this. This is a huge benefit but you have to rely on third-party plugins to use this benefit. You can also remove any effect from the No Effect menu. The mixer bar and meter bar are now merged, leading to a cleaner interface. You will see two sliders in the recording meter and playback meter. These are to adjust volumes. You can double-click on the sliders to see their values. If you are recording something and adjusting the slider, you will see the recording meter reflecting that change. Though this feature is not new, having the volume slider in the meter makes it easy to see the change. For the playback meter slider, you will not see the change in the playback meter. Your output volume is adjusted, but the meter will show the current audio level irrespective of what value you set in the slider. Basically, you are adjusting the volume of your headphone or sound box. The next change is the new audio setup button. You can set your playback device and recording device from here. Previously these things were in the device toolbar. It is in the compact version now and has given the extra audio settings options. These are mainly changes in terms of user interface but nothing new in features. You can still use the previous device toolbar if you prefer. Though I would recommend getting used to the new interface as it takes less space. There is a new arrangement in the effects menu but I think that is hardly noticeable because most of us may not remember which effect was exactly where. A new real-time effects menu which is the same you see in the track. The grouping feature of the effects menu can be accessed from preferences. You can set which types of effects you want to enable. You can also sort the effects by the group you feel is convenient. This is also a UI-based change. Icons are updated which is pretty obvious to notice when we install it. Besides changing these icons, Audacity rearranged these tools a bit. Audacity now provides an easier audio sharing option through audio.com. You can link your account to audio.com, upload your audio, and share it. It makes the audio collaboration easier, but you have to buy audio.com subscriptions. Besides these changes, now VST3 effects are supported. However, there is some issue with which plugin supports which architecture. So be mindful of that. For Mac users, there is good news. Through Apple Silicon support M1 and M2 users will get a smoother experience. Previous Audacity had some issues with the M1 MacBook. You can get either a universal version or a specific M1 M2 version from downloads. I hope to go through the full interface soon and let you know if I find any other updates. Thanks for watching and happy audio journey with the new Audacity.